When I saw there was a new version of Ghost PSD, I just had to download it and give it a test. Is it as good as it always is? Let's find out. Downloading GhostBSD is as easy as it always has been, and the GhostBSD website is nicely laid out. We'll just scroll down and see the latest news, which alerted me that there was a new version, and it's GhostBSD 20.11.28. And on this page, it will tell you all the various new features and fixes, etc. And how to upgrade an existing GhostBSD installation. And to download, we'll just simply go to download, choose the mirror closest to yourself, or either XFCE or the main official one. In this case, we're going to the official Mate version. And just click save. And it will start to download. I've never had any problems with the download speed for GhostBSD. They seem to have some faster uh, mirrors. And as you can see, this is getting up to 23, which is quite quick. And after we've downloaded, you get a chance to donate. And before we get on with the actual review, we'll look at the changes. There's a new live system that leverages ZFS, compression and replication, first seen in FuryBSD. So there's a bit of cross-pollination going on there, which is good. Improvements to the Linux Linuxulator to improve Steam performance. An updated kernel and user land, Domate 1.24.1. And software station has been updated. And here are some of the bug fixes and pull requests, open and merged. You can pause this if you want to read in more detail. These are available on the GhostBSD release announcement. So we're just going to boot into the live session using my trusty old test machine. I'll leave the specs on the screen. I think very little's changed in the uh, the menu system as you can see. And, and that's one of the good things about FreeBSD and GhostBSD in the sense that they don't change if it's not necessary. If something works, brilliant, just leave it. Here we are in the live session. And everything looks as it normally does. Nothing out of the ordinary. And these, I won't go over the details of these, but this is what you get as default. Both in the live session and the actual install when you do it. It's good to see you get a full office suite of uh, LibreOffice, that's always nice. Gives GhostBSD a definite workstation vibe. And there's your various configurations. Administration and Control Center. And clicking on Install brings up the usual menu. Again, no surprises. And if you choose the keyboard setup. I actually do love the GhostBSD install uh, menu system. It's very nice. Eventually found it. There you go. And time zone, Europe and London. There you go. Uh, ZFS by default, which is good. We'll use the default ZFS. Uh, got a single drive, um, leave everything as it is. Password, obviously choose a password you want for root. And we'll fill in the details. Change that to test as I always do. And password again. And change this from fish to sh. And... I think that's done. And we will restart. We're just about to log into a new install. And there we go. I just love the simplicity of GhostBSD. It's, um, like I say, it's, it's got that workstation vibe about it. Now we're going to try and do some updates, both system and software, and it's all available in one neat little package, both the software and the main system in one screen. 
And that little option down there is just in case you want to roll back if any mistakes are made. I'm just going to install. And again, we'll just fast forward this. You don't want to be sitting here while it's updating. And another restart. Right, we've just restarted and we're back in, so we're not going to waste your time. And we'll try the software station to get some uh, extra packages installed. Let's put in the password. Give it a minute. Ah, okay. Well, that wasn't uh, wasn't expected. We'll, we'll start it up again. Again with password. And it goes off at exactly the same place. Okay. Well, I'm um, going to try and launch the application using console to see what error messages it gives. And, yeah, I'm not sure what the command is, so I'm just going to copy that to the desktop. And then we'll have a look at what it pulls. Right, it's sudo software station. I could have I guessed that, of course. We'll try it again. Of course, it fails again, and right. So, in case any developers are looking at this, I was getting this um, error every time. So, yeah, okay. I'll do it the old-fashioned way then. I'll just use it. Uh, I'll install the package manually. But it's an interesting error, and uh, it might be just me, of course, and if it is, then, you know, well, it's just one of those things. But if not, I think it needs to be seen, too, because if a lot of people are using a graphical package manager and it fails like that, then it might be slightly off-putting. Anyway, I want to install Linus. So, package search Linus, and brings up that version, and we're just going to install it. And nice and quick. And now if we go Linus audit system we'll let it do its magic and finished and we'll have a look at the default out of the box score and oh that's very nice indeed 62 I think the default for FreeBSD is about 56, 57 so I know for a fact that there is a firewall in play with Ghost BSD, so that could have been that. Very nice indeed. Here's for the memory consumption and the running processes if anyone's interested. I'll just clean up the desktop and empty the trash. Next we're going to look at the wallpapers and now now there's not a great selection to choose from, as it never has really, so... Uh, but I'll talk about this later. The fonts, uh, small adjustment, We'll have a look at Firefox, for those who may be interested. Now this version of Firefox, I think it's either the latest or pretty much the latest. Uh, let's have a look. And it is, yeah, okay, 83. So we're fully up to date as of the date of this video. And next we'll have a look at Really one of the other things which you really should have on a an operating system is an office suite. And we've got LibreOffice, of course. And we'll just type in the obligatory hello. After we change the viewing, I always like to set it to the widest possible view. There's your hello. I'll make it big font. There we go. And we'll have a look at the about. There you go. So, what do I think about GhostBSD? It's difficult for me to uh, give a review of something I use uh, almost every day. And I've reviewed it previously. And this new version is an incremental uh, 
release. There's nothing major. The Mate has been updated to 1.24.1. And on under the hood, uh, improvements have been made. But nothing earth shattering. And I think that's not a bad thing at all. It's very, very stable. Nothing's been introduced which would undermine that. We did have an issue with the um, software station crashing, which I've not had before. So whether or not it was a bad download or maybe the uh, USB image wasn't um, written correctly, I don't know. I will we'll probably have another look to see if I can replicate that. And if it is, then it's, uh, it's perhaps a problem that needs to be seen too. But apart from that, um, Ghost BSD is wonderful. I actually do love Ghost BSD. I think from the stability and the reliability it's given uh, as home schooling uh, systems is, is, is excellent. It's never let me down and it's always been there for when they need it. The wallpaper issue, well, it's not an issue, is it? I mean, I think in this stage in Ghost BSD's life, I think um, maybe a stronger branding could come into it. And like I say, I'm not offering my, my services here because I can't design anything. But say, for instance, oh, I don't know, an icon set, which is not an easy task. I'm not, I'm not being anywhere saying anything like this is easy, but an icon set that's distinctive to Ghost BSD, a color scheme which is distinctive, a wallpaper which is distinctive you know using either um, you know like a 3d rendering or a more abstract uh, imagery to represent ghost psd so instantly you see it and just little things like that because i think now ghost psd is really at a point where you know i'd be comfortable using this um for a work computer for a work workstation or an office workstation because the, it is so reliable you know it doesn't throw any uh, unexpected left turns you know, don't introduce new technologies for the sake of it and then manage to mangle everything up. So I think of a more uh, a more serious uh, appearance might might be in order. I mean, I might be wrong, of course. I mean, old Eric at uh, Eric BSD at Ghost BSD was showing off a video where he was playing CSGO and uh, via the, the Linux Steam. And it was working very well. So, you know, it may be that he wants to go down the path of playing games on Ghost BSD, which it can do. So, yeah. But either way, if for a general purpose, multi-purpose operating system, Ghost BSD is, uh, well, you can't go wrong. And it's never let me down yet, so highly recommended. Download the latest version, or if you've already got it installed, upgrade. And let us know what you think down below. Is it a hit or is it a miss? For me, it's definitely a hit, and I think it will be for you too. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Well done if you've made it to the end of the video, and if you've found it useful in any way, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps the channel grow so that I can keep on making content that helps the FreeBSD community grow as well. Uh -huh.